Hi, I'm Pastor Steve, and welcome to Ignite TV. What an awesome day we have planned. Listen, at any time during this telecast, you can call the number on the screen. I have a fired up prayer team of people waiting to answer the phone, and they will pray with you about whatever need you have on your heart and your body, your mind, whatever you're going through. It's not a counseling center. We're just going to pray with you. But man, when we pray, we touch heaven. God moves in the midst of us. We're two or three of you agree on touching anything, it shall be done. Praise the Lord. So give us a call. I have a ton of prayer requests here that have been coming in over the weeks, and we're going to pray for some of these at the end of the program. If you call and receive prayer, I will get a report written down, your name and prayer request, so I can pray with you throughout the week, and my intercessory prayer team gets to see these and pray with you as well. So we want to help you. We're here for you. We love you, and we want Jesus Christ in your life, mighty and on fire. Let's go to the Lord and ask him to bless the next half hour telecast, and then we're going to go to a song called Hosanna. Now, Father, let the anointing of the Lord rain down, the power of the Holy Spirit go forth. Open up the heart of everyone watching, and Lord, I think of those who have been calling me from the nursing homes and the hospitals, especially today. Touch them with a mighty grace from God on high. I know that you see everyone and where they are at this moment and the needs in their lives. Let this sermon and this song minister to their needs now. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's go to the song from this past Sunday. It's called Hosanna. Praise is rising. Eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Hearts are yearning for you. We long for you. Cause when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna. sound of hearts returning to you. We turn to you. In your kingdom, broken lives are made new. Oh, Jesus, you make us new. Yes, you do, Lord. When we see find strength to face the day. In your presence our fears are washed away, they're washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God Welcome here, Lord. Yes, you are, Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna. Worthy of all our praises. you 
Praise the Lord. Like the song says, we welcome you here, Lord Jesus. And that's what we're doing right now. We're asking him to be a part of our lives. If you are away from the Lord or need to give your life to him for the very first time, people have been calling us and we've been praying with them to receive Jesus Christ as Savior and have their sins forgiven, please call us right now. Or for any other reason, for healing or anything, we'll pray with you. We have a team waiting right now to hear from you live. Listen, Ephesians 5 says, i got to hurry up, in verse 6 and 7, Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them. And verse 8 says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. We're going to our Sunday morning sermon from Ephesians chapter 5, talking about walking as children of the light. Listen to me. When you turn the light on, what happens to the darkness? The darkness flees. Darkness always flees the light. The light always wins. Capital L, Jesus Christ. Let's go to that sermon now. Christ in you, the hope of glory. I got the hope, baby. I've got the power, honey. Hallelujah. Jesus came to town when I came to town because I know who I believe in. He's right in here. And you see, not everybody wants to hang around people like that. Isn't that true? Even when I was a young man, I'd, I'd go golfing on my day off. When I was a youth pastor, I'd go golfing by myself, get up at 6 a.m. or so and uh, leave my wife and my little children at home, and I'd get back in time to spend the day with them. And a number of times, I would join up with a, a threesome because you're allowed to have as many as four golfers at one time together. That's the rule. And there were many times, and this happened many times even when I was young, 20, 23 years old, and I'd be golfing with these uh, usually retired fellows, and they'd be fussing and cussing and carrying on. In fact, I remember one time before I was even in the ministry, I was 19 years old, and I was still living at home, and I was getting ready to go to Bible college, and I went golfing at Polish Pines Golf Course in Kaiser, West Virginia, and I've met up, these three guys asked me if I could golf with them. They said they had room, so sure, I was by myself. They were retired fellows, and they were all talking, ask, I was asking them what they did for a living, but they, before they retired, oh, I was a police officer, and I did this and that. And they said, so what do you want to do for a living? I said, I'm going to be a pastor. This is like hole number seven. There's like 11 more. Well, I'm going to be a pastor. Hey, Jim, you better keep it quiet. Jim was saying a lot of cuss words. You know what I mean? Oh, we better be good now. The pastor showed up at the golf course. You see, the dark, it knows the light. See, darkness knows it loses every time. Go ahead, turn all the lights off back there. Would you, Don, turn all the lights off? The, just the sanctuary lights. You can leave the stage lights on. Turn them all off. Watch this. Darkness coming. Here comes the darkness. Look, there's darkness. Now, now you might need some help. I want them all turned on at one time. All, all, can, they, can you get them? Are you ready? This is going to take some skill. Let's turn on the light. Where'd the darkness go? Wait, do it, do it again. They didn't catch it. That was really good, Don. You have some mad skills. Now, now this time we're going to turn on the light, but the darkness is going to win. Are you ready? One, two, three, light. Okay, that's good, thanks. You, that was good. Don't get carpal tunnel or nothing. We'll pray for healing anyway. Praise the Lord. If you're dealing with carpal tunnel, in the name of Jesus, right now, just spread those hands. Spread those hands. Come on, he can turn a joke into a prophetic word. Come on, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So there's somebody watching at home, carpal tunnel, get out of their body in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. People are getting saved watching at home, folks. We got a call last week, another salvation. Call someone in a hospital. Praise the Lord, be praying. Listen, Every time the light shows up, darkness loses. Darkness never wins. Come on, you got to spiritualize this. Come on, you got to get this. Didn't you read the end of this book, huh? The devil loses. The prince of darkness. 
lost to the king of kings. Hallelujah. The light came, the darkness fled. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Why? Because darkness has to leave when you turn on the switch. So the only thing the devil can do to get the church in the last days to fail is to either get us to turn to darkness or to get us to keep the switch turned off. You catching it? You're at work, and there's someone on your heart. You've been praying for this person at work, and God gives you a word for them. And what's the first thing the devil says to you? Oh, you better not tell them. Keep the switch off. Don't tell them. They're not going to ever respect you. They'll make fun of you. They'll do this to you. Well, it's not about you. You're going to heaven. They don't have that hope. You might have read this Bible ten times through. They might not have had one in their hand, but once at a Christmas Eve service in a pew. You have 27 versions of the Bible on your smartphone. Your your iTunes and your Pandora plays Christian music, but theirs is playing the stuff of the world. Turn the light on, folks. The devil wants you to believe if you turn on your light, you're going to be subject to trouble. But don't you realize if you turn on your light, he has to leave. He has to leave. The trouble's all his. See, the devil's the one in trouble, not me. I mean, I just got over a cold. I go through stuff. I've been sick. I have a a bulge in my tire. I was at the mall yesterday and saw a bulge in the sidewall of my front tire and scared him now. I had to drive home real careful. I got I to gotta get my tire. I wanted to talk about that, Dan. I got to get my tire. So if you have a minute, you know. I got, got a bulge in my tire. I must have hit a pothole. Do you know what I'm saying? Listen, I hit potholes. I go through life. I got problems. But, man, I'm overcoming by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. I love not my life to the death. Man, I'm filled with the power of God. I'm not the one leaving town. The darkness is. You see, if the church won't stand, the darkness can keep everything a little bit gray. But it's time to turn all the lights on. Don, give me half the lights. Well, that's kind of actually nice mood setting, isn't it? It's not bad. I just need a little, you know, little music now. This, the devil will even try to keep a fired up church at this level, at bay. You know what I'm saying? But the Lord said, let there be light. The light comes on. We've got to have enough light to read the paper on the Bible. You see, Paul the Apostle said, do not, do not share in these sins of these people, but rather expose them. Because you were once darkness. How about that? You were once darkness. You know, and where do Christians get off judging other people? You were in the trash can. You know what I'm saying? We forget who we were. And maybe if you've been saved all your life, then, then maybe you forget who you were going to be if Jesus hadn't rescued you at an early age. And if you want to find out, then interview some people that got saved at the age of 40. And they'll tell you what Jesus rescued you from. And if you've been saved at a later age and went through some things and you wonder why, let me just tell you, to much is forgiven, much love is shown. Hallelujah. You can show the Lord a lot of love. Praise the Lord. We're not supposed to judge them. I know we're supposed to expose them. But we don't do it by some mental judgment. We do it by the very nature of who we are. I don't have to go around and try to expose people. It just happens. I'm not trying to expose anybody. I'm not trying to figure out what your sins are. I don't want to know. I just want to know Jesus. But, man, the closer I get to him and the more he shines, stuff just comes up. And he uses me.
and he'll use you. But if you keep your light turned off, then the devil wins. You see, the darkness can't function in a well-lit place. Excuse me. You might see little shadows under the pew. But still, could you hide something there? I could see. I can see that little tissue box. It's empty under, under the pew there, Pastor Isaac. It's an empty one. You've been using them, huh? No? That's good. Now, if you turn all the lights off, I couldn't. So I know there's no place to hide with the light on. And one problem the church is having by turning light on is we have things we're hiding. So let's get rid of it. Let's turn the light on. Hey, if you've got darkness in you, do you really want darkness in you? What good is it? He called it unfruitful, which I'm not even going to get to today. And I knew I wasn't going to get to all this. We'll be in this for a couple weeks, I think. Do not partake with them. I think of communion last week, we call it, we partake, right? And here Paul says, don't partake with people who are living in darkness. Don't partake in their sins, you know? But rather, be the light. Turn the light on and expose it. There's, there's this, uh, this false notion nowadays in, in the ministry that you've got to talk the way the world talks, you've got to look the way the world looks, you've got to act the way the world acts in order to save souls. Hmm? I mean, you've got to know all the latest movies, and you've got to be able to sing all the songs on the radio, and you've got to have all the, the right tattoos and look and this and that, and hey, hey, you know, I don't look nothing like that. And we've seen, I think, close to how many? 200 souls saved since I've been here? 150? Praise the name of Jesus. How, how can you look like every single person anyway? You know what I mean? I'm a 46-year-old man, 6 foot 5, 225. I'm not going to look like a lot of people. Just me. I don't have to act like the world. Did Jesus act like the world? Did Jesus eat with the tax collectors and prostitutes? Did he eat with them? He did, didn't he? And the drunks and the, the scum of the world, did he eat with them? He did, but did he act like them? He didn't, did he? Did he ever tax somebody or hire a prostitute or something terrible like that? Never. Never. You see, if you're going to help somebody out of the pit, you're supposed to be outside the pit. You know, if the two of us are in a pit together and we're clawing at the walls, we're just sliding around. You need the guy at the lip, lip of it with the rope, don't you? Someone's got to be out of the pit. Well, that's, that's us. Someone's got to pay the electric bill so we can turn the lights on. Jesus did that. So now we, we don't partake we partake of the table of the Lord, and we don't partake of the table of the world. But we don't judge the world. Let God do that. Let's love everybody that comes through these doors. And let's love everybody outside these doors, too. What do you say? And let's let the light shine, because truly the light of Jesus is full of love. You know, I'm looking forward to spring. They say that 50-degree weather's coming. Did you hear that? Wow, I'll tell you, I might go swimming. After seven degrees, 50 feels like 90. I get my swimsuit uh, washed and ready to go. You know what I mean? I'm going to go get a tan. 50 degrees, that's a sweat. You know, I, I, like, the, I like the spring and summer. I love the winter too, though. But the sun is so powerful, isn't it? I mean, my cars were covered with snow and full of ice. And I, I tried to wipe it off, and they were in a shady place. So I pulled them out in the church parking lot here in the sun, and boy, it just melted it off. I mean, it's 10 degrees out, but the sun still melted that snow. It's so powerful. You see, the light isn't supposed to be some piercing light in the eyes of the world. We're not supposed to blind them. We're supposed to be a comfort and a love to them. 
not to say what you're doing is fine, but to say this is the way. And can you feel that tan coming on, you know? After the coldness of a life, and if you were saved at a late age, you know how cold life is without Jesus. Anybody raise your hand and testify, life is cold without Jesus. See? Look around. Amen. Life is cold and dark. I mean, how do you overcome a loss of a loved one without Jesus Christ? Let alone a cat that you'd like to shock her tail. I mean, now she's gone. You know? How do you overcome? But we've got Jesus. But what a cold world this is without Jesus. So you see, when we walk into a room, when we go into a restaurant, when we go somewhere in this world and we bring that light with us, it's not so everybody look at me and it's not to blind them with your greatness. It's to bring a joy. You hear me? It's to bring a comfort. Because I tell you, that 50-degree day that's coming, I just can't wait to get on my scooter and ride down to church in short sleeves and feel the warmth of the sun. I might just get a blanket and lay in the middle of the driveway and enjoy the warm sun. And you think I'm crazy, but you ask my family, every spring, the first 50, 55-degree day, I'm outside laying on a blanket. Is that right? About Easter time, isn't that right? You might think it's crazy, but I like the sun. You know? I know too much of it isn't good. You get burned. That's the difference between Jesus and the sun. You can't get too much of Jesus. And you're not going to get burned. Hallelujah. He took you out of the burn, praise the Lord, and set your feet on the rock. Hallelujah. He took you away from the lake of fire, and he's building you a mansion. In glory. Isn't God good? So I'm telling you, like Dawn flipping the switches on. Stop just going through one by one. Let's turn the light on this week. Let's be more than an American Christian. Let's be people who follow Jesus. His example. He loved the worst in this world. The worst people in this world, he loved them. He said in Matthew 6, he said to love your enemies even. He did. To even love them. To pray for those who despitefully use you. You ever been despitefully used? You're supposed to pray for that person. Boy, that's hard to do. So let's turn the lights on, folks. We're here on this planet for a reason. And not one of you need to doubt that. When you wake up tomorrow morning, you need to know before your feet hit the floor, God puts you here for a purpose. Listen, before you get your head off the pillow tomorrow morning, before that depression can set in, before those lies of the devil can get in your head, you proclaim, I'm here as an ambassador for Christ. I am the light of the world. You proclaim it with your lips. Let your ears hear it. If you've been suffering with direction and struggling to know God's will for your life, let me tell you, just speak that Jesus, he's kept you here for a reason. He has. You have a purpose, my friends. And your purpose is to be that warmth that joy, to be an example to those around you of what a life in Christ is really like. It is true, my friends. Jesus Christ, he is the light of the world. He lives in us. He made us the light in this world. And the light overcomes the darkness. Praise the name of Jesus. He's the King of kings and Lord of lords. And we're going to go to him right now in prayer for your needs at home, and for those that have been called in just recently. And we're going to ask Jesus to meet our needs. Let's pray now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray that you touch everyone that's been calling in, everyone watching and within the sound of my voice on the internet, on the television. Lord, we ask you for a mighty miracle. Touch and heal bodies, oh God, and move and let the ministry of the Holy Spirit occur. 
baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire and set people free in their minds and their worries and anxieties. Let them be cast away in Jesus' name. We pray for this one who's been fighting seizures, oh God. Remove them from her life in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, and for this back surgeries, Lord, and been in the nursing home for a couple years, bring her out in Jesus' name we pray. And this one who wants to get closer to you, a fresh anointing, Lord God. And Lord, we do pray for this one who has a son in the Air Force. Keep him safe, fighting for the safety of our country, Lord, and save his wife. Lord, thank you for all these needs. We ask for your power and your might. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Come back next week. I love you. Hi, I'm Pastor Isaac Deer, the student ministries pastor here at Lighthouse. And I... What's this? This reminds me, March 28th, we are having our annual Easter egg hunt here at Lighthouse Christian Fellowship starting at 1 p.m. So come out and join us. We're going to have 10,000 of these little things filled with candy. We're also going to be having prizes leading up to a grand prize drawing at the end of the event. The cost is completely free, so come out and join us, and we're going to have a great time. I wonder if I can find any more of these around somewhere. Hi, I'm Pastor Steve, lead pastor of Lighthouse Christian Fellowship. I'm here on our beautiful campus, and I want to invite you to come and worship with us Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. We have an awesome children's ministry, dynamic worship, anointed sermons, and we're just four miles south of the northeast extension of the Pennsylvania Turnpike at the Quaker Town exit. Come and enjoy the wonderful presence of the Holy Spirit and powerful gospel message. If you're looking for a church, come and worship with us. We'd love to see you this Sunday. Night TV is a ministry of Lighthouse Christian Fellowship, 2788 Garyville Pike, Pennsburg, PA, 18073. To contact us for prayer or more information, call us at 215-679-4482 or check us out online at ignitetv.org. You can also write us at Ignite TV, 2788 Garyville Pike, Pennsburg, PA, 18073. If you would like to help financially support this ministry, you can call, correspond by mail, or go to ignitetv.org.